Hello friends, this is Cindy Blair from the Alexandria Museum of Art and I am bringing you your latest edition of AMOA's Art Together Tuesday. Um, so I'm in my studio in Pineville and um, I have been working on a sketchbook to sh project to share with you guys. So moving forward, um, it would might be a really nice thing to have a sketchbook to record your thoughts, your feelings, maybe do a little journaling, a little sketching. Um, and I have, um, I found one, a project where you can make them from things that you might already have in your home. Um, and we do a little collaging um, in this one and um, to make the cover. And I just want you to remember as we move forward with this, that um, you can treat collage like jazz. You don't have to go in with a bunch of um, already formed ideas. Um, collage can really be about playing with the images. Um, you know, just sort of playing with images that you respond to, that you find in magazines, that maybe you print from the internet. Um, so it's, I really enjoy doing this and um, I hope you guys will too. So let's get started. Okay, today to make our sketchbooks, what we're going to need are, you need some kind of paper. Um, I've got just plain copy paper right here because I figured some of you might have that in your homes. Um, but any kind of paper that you can draw on is fine. Um, if you want to get some really nice sketch paper, that's good too. Um, but you're going to take that. Um, we've also, you need a piece of cardboard or something stiff. You can, uh, if you've got some chipboard or um, also poster board would work, um, cereal boxes, um, anything stiff that you can actually draw on or glue on would be fine. But um, cereal boxes are actually really quite good if you have those. Um, and then you're going to need something to decorate your cover with. Now that can be Sharpie markers or um, plain markers or crayons or, you know, whatever you've got. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using magazines and things that I cut out um, to do some decoupage. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so that's how I'm going to decorate my cover. Um, just because I think that a lot of you might have um, like newspaper or something at home that you could um, paste to the front. So that's, I'm going to show you that technique. Um, you'll also need some string and or something um, to, to wrap around. So like if you have ribbon or yarn, anything like that. Um, they do sell really big rubber bands that work nicely, but if you can't, don't have access to that, that's fine. You're going to need a little container as well as some glue, white glue. It works really well for this. Um, if you've actually, if you happen to have Mod Podge, that works really nicely as well, but if you don't, glue is fine. Um, you're going to need a pair of scissors, a ruler and either a box cutter or a super sharp pair of scissors to cut your cardboard with. Um, and that should get us started. Optional items would be markers or pins or anything like that. So um, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is I've got all my paper right here. You're gonna need to fold each paper in a half horizontally or as the kids say, I think they call that hamburger style instead of the other way is hot dog style. But we're gonna we're gonna fold hamburger. Um, so we're gonna fold each piece individually. If you have a with this copy paper, it's not necessary to um, use anything to make the crease tighter. But you could if you had um, a butter knife or you could even use, you know, your straight edge and just make sure. Now that's really important if you're using like a thicker paper, like a sketchbook, sketch paper, a really nice thick paper. You'd want to make sure that those, that you've got that really flat. But this paper is pretty easy just to do it with your fingernail or your finger. 
but you want them to fold them as straight as you can. They don't have to be perfect, nothing does. Your next step is to cut a piece of cardboard. Now this isn't perfectly straight, um, that's okay. Um, we'll smooth those edges down in a little bit, but what you wanna do is you want to cut a piece of cardboard so the paper that I used was eight and a half by 11. So when you fold it in half, um, this is about five, five and a quarter inches or a little over five inches this way. Um, I think. So then you want to make sure that your paper, that your cardboard, is, you wanna make sure it's twice the length. So I cut mine to be about 13 inches long that's gonna give me some extra space so that my pages will fit nicely in there. Then I made a little mark about halfway and that's where I kind of folded my book. Now when you cut your cardboard, the cool thing about cardboard for something like this is that it has these sort of corrugated lines that go down inside. So when you fold, you can fold along those lines and you get a nice, a nice bend. So I just sort of folded it in half evenly this was just a random box I had laying around. So you wanna make sure that your pages fit inside with a little bit left over. See? So for now I'm gonna sit my pages aside somewhere where I won't get anything on them. And we're gonna focus on our cover now. So I am going to collect a few, um, Got some magazines here and some some of these type of sort of big format uh, magazines, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to find a nice background for the inside and outside of my cover, and then I'm going to find some images to layer on top of those. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first thing to ooh. Glue, so I have some glue in here, still wet. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put a little glue in my container. Okay, and I'm putting it in a container because I will be using a brush um, to brush it on. And I've gotten, so let me talk a little bit about um, what I've collected here. So I have, from the magazines I found, I have some pieces that are just text. I really love the way um, images and drawing look against a background of text. I just think it makes a really cool background. So I'm gonna use that as sort of a background. Um, you could use, uh, maybe you found a plain colored um, construction paper or uh, scrapbook paper is really great for a collage background. So, um, you know, something with a pattern is really nice. But um, I'm going to start with my background. So, you see how the book is folding? That's the inside of my, that's the outside of my book. This is the inside. Um, I think, let's start on the outside. So, I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. And dip it into the glue. And just... Slop a lot of glue on your cardboard. Okay, you, you want to go all the way to the edges. Okay, get it wet with glue. I'm going to just lay it, lay it on there like that and press. Now in a minute, I'm actually gonna, I've got a little bit overhanging. I'm actually gonna fold that over in just a second. And that's gonna smooth out the rough edges of my book. So, it's wrinkling a little bit, but that's okay. using my brush it goes into the water 
I'm kind of a stickler about that because it keeps it from drying on the brush and ruining the brush. And I'm going to smooth that down. Now in a little while I will put another glue over the um, layer of glue over the top, but I'm going to save that for um, later. Okay, now I'm going to come along the inside, fold my edges in, get a bit of a crease on it. Actually, if you want to, you can kind of gift wrap these edges if you have enough paper there. There we go. So that's just um, bringing it at an angle. See, I don't have enough on this side, but like you would when you're gift wrapping, you pull in a triangle, but I don't have enough on that side. So you can kind of just like pull in a corner in a corner, crease it really good, and then pull that over. It makes a nice edge. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to continue gluing this down. And you can always just squirt a bunch on there. It just doesn't come out of this container very nicely. And then just brush it. I'm gonna go ahead and um, put these edges down first. Sort of press them down with your brush. Okay. Now I'm going to have to trim this piece and press it down first. I'm just going to trim. And nothing has to be straight here or perfect. In fact, I really like it when edges look organic um, when I'm collaging. And I guess it depends on what kind of image you're doing, but I like to have some sort of more organic edges and things. But that's just me. Even though I've put a lot of glue, um, oh well, not a crazy amount of glue, but I put a good squirt on the inside. It's still pretty dry on the outside. I mean, it's damp, you can feel, but it's not, um, I don't have so much glue that it's soaked all the way through the paper or it's coming through any cracks. So, um, so it's fairly smooth. I am going to flip it over and I'm going to start thinking about my outside cover. Now, I've collected a few images. So what I did was I was actually going through uh, these Country Roads magazine. And so there's three different ones. So I'm getting sort of Southern themed images. Um, and I don't know, I just, what I do when I do something like this is I will just leaf through a magazine or 20 <laughs> and I will find images that, um, I don't know just sort of strike something in me they just seem interesting to me and um, you can kind of make sort of a story out of your images um, and I'll be honest with you this one turned out to be a little bit like sort of weird images so I've got these um, so these are traditional Mardi Gras or uh, traditional Louisiana Mardi Gras um, writers that's uh, career Career de Mardi Gras, Courier de Mardi Gras. Somebody tell me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, my brother and sister-in-law do this every year, and um, 
It looks like a lot of fun, but the masks look super creepy to me. So there's something vaguely creepy about them, but I still think it's kind of cool. And this image really, I thought was powerful. And I thought it would be a really cool image for the outside. And then I'm just gonna layer images on top of that and maybe some drawing and just come up with something kind of fun and odd. And um, I found, I don't know if you can see, isn't that just the creepiest thing? It was a little boat in a bayou or something with these gnomes in it. It's so creepy. But um, I thought that was beautiful image. We've got a weird sort of horse wearing a fancy necklace that I thought was funny. I don't know. I was just odd things were resonating with me today. Oh, it's a lightning bug apparently. So I have a few friends who really, really love them. I mean, who doesn't love lightning bugs? They're pretty cool. Um, and this one, I've just never seen a still image of one posed like that before. It's so strange. Um, so that's what I'm gonna, oh, and some more Mardi Gras masks. You know, they make these out of window screens. Anyway, kind of fun. Um, and I may go back and grab some more images, but I'm just gonna think about making compositions with these right now. And I'm gonna start with this big image for across my cover. I think it's gonna go across. Let me see how it will see how it will bend. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, when it bends, these two guys are in the front. That'll be kind of cool. Let's see what we come up with. Now you may want to place your images. Um, down first and then glue, but today I'm just gonna kind of wing it. So you you know you can organize them first and then glue them down, which is probably a really good idea. But that's not what I'm doing today. Make sure my fingers are dry and I'm just going to smooth it out. Yeah. Now I don't like to have, um, well, it's not always true. I don't always like to have, I usually don't like to have straight edges in my collage. I kind of like to have things um, have more sort of organic images, um, organic edges. I'm just gonna kind of play and see what I like here. Okay, so I have decorated the inside of my book and the outside. So at some point I realized that this is actually my front, so I added a little bit more to it. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a coat of glue over top everything. And that's going to sort of seal it all in, give all this like a protective coat. I'm just going right over the top. Now it's going to dry clear, so don't be worried about that. Okay, so um, I have finished my cover. Uh, well, more or less, I might doodle with it later, but um, as you can see, I have added a lot of doodles around the edges. Um, I went, at, you know, both uh, sides have been covered in glue um, entirely, so they're nice and, they feel nice and finished. Um, and then I went over the top of that with some Sharpie markers. So if you have that, that's great. Um, Gel pens might work as well, but um, 
yeah, I just thought that that would add a little to it. And then I actually did some to the inside and I thought a little bit about making this the front cover. If I wanted to do that, I would just bend it the other way. But um, I think I'm going to leave it like this just because this one's a little, this is a nicely decorated front cover. So um, now you're just going to take your pages that you folded and slide them in the center. Now what I did, the cool thing about doing this the way we're going to do it is that you can add or take away pages at any time because the binding is um, removable. So I actually went ahead and if you have uh, colored paper or maybe you have some nice sketch paper, um, I even added a piece of watercolor paper and you know, so I can if you have those things at home, that's kind of a nice thing about this journal too, is that it's um, you can modify it. And so you're gonna open it, open your pages to the center. Now you can either use some string, um, anything that you have to tie with. I have a lot of yarn. I could have used yarn, um, but you know this is just regular twine. You could use that. Um, I happen to have. <laughs> I just thought about this last night. I have a box full of ribbons. So, you know, if you have any ribbons around the house, that's something you could use too, and it makes it more ornate. But, you know, this is just for you. So it doesn't, anything will do. So I'm just sliding that along the, around the center and then as tightly as I can, I'm just gonna tie the back and I'm tying it in a little bow so I can take it off later. I'm tying it tight though. I'll just get that centered around the back. And voila, you have a sketchbook. And this is a sketchbook that you can use to record your thoughts, um, your feelings. Um, you can just sketch. I, I highly recommend maybe going into going out into nature if you can and um, you know sketching beautiful trees and you know sunsets and that kind of thing. It's it's a good time for that. Um, also, what I think I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I am going to make this my um, weekly art therapy journal. So um, I'm gonna be doodling in this regularly for my own uh mental and emotional health <laughs> and um i'll be sharing those doodles with you on art therapy thursday thank you for joining us for another amoa art together tuesday and um i hope that you enjoy your sketchbook i actually plan to use mine i am going to do some mindful doodling in it i am going to do some sketching in it I might even write some poetry. Who knows what's going to happen? But I want you to encourage you to use your, um, use your sketchbook however you feel like you should. But don't be afraid to open it up and make some marks on the pages, okay? Um, I want to share with you one of my old sketchbooks. Um, this one I recently finished. And it's got some pretty cool stuff in it. It's got... Um, you know, drawings that I did that, you know, actually are pretty decent as drawings, I think. But, but, it also has some just sort of um, goofy doodles in it that ended up being a beautiful thing, but that was just about planning, and it's not a beautiful drawing. Um, it's also got a few beautiful drawings that didn't turn into anything, except for beautiful drawings, and that's okay. Um, I have a whole page where I play with the color blue. Don't be afraid. Um, and don't put pressure on yourself. Um, I want to share that I was in my studio this weekend and I was struggling to get back to my own art practice. Um, I have been putting a lot into these videos and I love it. Um, so I just didn't really have anything f and I was feeling pretty bad and um, I happened to hear a podcast where um, it was the TED interview podcast and um, they were talking to Elizabeth Gilbert and she was saying that she hasn't written in months. Um, she's a writer and she hasn't written in months, but that she's been doing little drawings and she's been doing things unrelated to writing or unrelated to her work to sort of fill her tank. 
And um, so I sat down this weekend and I did some doodling and um, just kind of let go. I didn't put pressure on myself and I feel so much better. So I hope you guys can do the same and I hope this little sketchbook helps. Um, enjoy it and I really want to see what you guys do so if you're comfortable sharing I'm always comfortable to see it um, you know artist John Simon who I mentioned in the art therapy Thursday video last week which you might want to check out because um, that'll get you started in your sketching but um, he talks about he does a he has a daily sketch practice just for a minute or two a day and um, he just does some mindful doodling so, you know, I, I challenge you to do the same um, and, you know, just kind of relax and enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually be using this sketchbook moving forward to doodle and draw and relax. <laughs> and, um, and I think that's going to turn into something beautiful. So I want you guys to be well and be healthy and take care of yourselves. And I'm going to see you on um, Thursday for Art Therapy Thursday. All right, see you soon. Bye.